we're going to go all the way to the south to Kanding. Now this area is particularly tricky because it's surrounded in coral reefs. Hello! Hello! This makes me the happy fisherman. It's so beautiful. We're in Yangpu Fishing Harbor, which is right next to Donggang in Pingdong County. And I got a special treat for you today. We're gonna go all the way to the south to Kanding. Now this area is particularly tricky because it's surrounded in coral reefs and it's also governed by the Kanding National Park Board. So that area, you have to enter with special permission and you have to make sure that you know where you're going so you don't damage the reefs and of course don't damage the boat going up on the reef. So I have a special friend with me here today, Tsai Chuanzhang, Captain Tsai, who's going to help us get into this tricky part because even a lot of the, the, the fishermen that are not from this part of Kanding don't know how to navigate these waters. Tsai Chuanzhang, ni hao. Ni hao, ni hao. Thank you to Tsai so we're going to be underway for about two and a half hours. Of course, it depends on the speed. I estimate we'll be going about 13, 14 knots. And we'll just see uh, how it goes. The most important thing we're going to do today is gas up as well, because I've never done that in Taiwan for a fishing boat. I've done it for a yacht, and I have no idea how it's done. So I'm going to gas this baby up uh, before we get underway as well. So come along and uh, let's get started on that. Unlike tanking a yacht, fishing boats are quite closely controlled because they want to make sure the gas you tank up is actually the gas you use for fishing, so you don't sell it anywhere else because it's actually subsidized. So I have a little device here, a little black box that uh, is hooked up to the GPS so they know exactly how far I've gone. And based on the distance that I've traveled, they will tell me how much I can tank up. They've actually connected my little box here to a computer which is hooked up to the gas station and that's how they know exactly how far I've gone, and in a few seconds he'll tell me how much I can tank. So you can see on the screen, I'm actually in the gas station. Here's the name of my boat, Kuala Yu Fu. Here's my name, Li Hao. And you can see it's hooked up to the boat here and it's calculating. And after that's done, it'll print out on the receipt here, and then I will know how much I can gas up. So I'm just waiting for that to happen now. Watch how cool. How yeah, cool. Can I also gas water? Okay, how cool. So is free. Oh, that's good. The water is free. I'm gonna add some water too so I can uh, clean the fish and take a shower. So I've just been told I can tank 700 liters. So I'm gonna go do that right now because I'm blocking another boat. All right, I can hear it.
So I want to explain where we are. We were about here. Xiao Liao Chao was here. Donggang is here. So around this part of Taiwan. And now we're going to head down to Kunding. So as we go down, we're going to pass a bunch of harbors. Uh, we're going to pass by first Fungang, which is up here. And as we get closer, we'll get into Kunding National Park here. And uh, that will be Haikou Yugong. And eventually, uh, we're going to get to Hong Tai Kong Yugong, which is down here. That's our destination. So this area here is within the Kunding Park area. And you'll notice as we get down to this area, the water will become rougher, I think, because they have the wind coming off the mountains and creating quite a turbulent water down here. Right now, it's very smooth sailing, but as we get down into Cunning Park, it's gonna get quite rough, I think. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So we're getting close to Fungong, which is right ahead of us, which is still at the lower part of Pingdong. There wasn't originally a fishing harbor there, so the boats were just parked on the beach. But in 1991, they built a proper fishing harbor so that the boats could be better protected because it did happen with the wind coming off the mountains that boats would get overturned. And you can see it's a little choppier than it was before, and the wind has changed direction. It's now coming off the mountain.那你以前在這裡博魚,你是博哪一方面的魚啊?這裡的移民抓著他們都是肥油魚。肥油魚就是一些季節性的魚類,肥魚啦,鬼頭刀他們季節已經過了,就比較少,就剩下鬼頭
So before we get to Hong Chai Kong, I just wanted to show you, this is why Kunding is so popular. You see all the people taking their vacation here, uh, canoeing, supping, it's become so popular over the years and the place is just packed. Hello! 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 Bye bye! So we've made our way from Haiko up here and we're almost at uh, Hong Chai Kun Fishing Harbor, which is our destination. Right before that, we have here Shanghai Yuga, which is right here, this little village. This was the original fishing harbor in this area and has a lot of history. This Kunding area was really where the Dutch came and spent a lot of time in the early days as well. And you can get a sense of how beautiful it was when you look at it here. We're just before sunset, we're almost in the harbor, but I wanted to point out this small historical harbor just before we get to Hong Chai Kung and get inside for the night. We're getting to the most southern part of Taiwan, which is just around this tip where we head to the most southern part of Taiwan. Kunding and the sun is about to set. Who cannot be happy when you have weather like this? This makes me the happy fisherman. It's so beautiful. Wow, Sensei Kandiga. Yes, I'm telling. Shanghai, not Shanghai. Mountain, ocean. Not Shanghai, but very beautiful. We're at Hong Chai Kong Fishing Harbor, right at the mouth. And this harbor takes its name from the Hong Chai tree, which was grown here as a bit of a windbreak. It's quite common here. This fishing harbor serves this small community of about 300 homes and is actually very tiny. And that's why we're getting help going in because it's very shallow. Even inside, I gotta watch out. Come on, let's go. Korea, Jinju. <laughs> 